Trayvon Walker, athleticism, build, speed. Oh my goodness, I am in love with the prototypical edge player. Cool, thank you, buddy. But you can't look me in the face this morning and tell me it's not different. You have something special now. You do. Do they have the quarterback? Do they have the head coach? I don't know. So that's Dan Campbell's next step. I think he's won the locker room. I think the players love him. And you compound that with on-the-field success. Well, Detroit, you become a legit franchise. I'm going to tell you why I've never been more optimistic in this football team than I am now. And look, you know, you can credit the coach. You can credit Sheila, Brad Holmes. I don't think it's one person at the moment. I think... I think there's one common denominator, which is that there are people in charge that are competent. That's that's nice to see. And I think you guys know better, right? As a Detroit Lions fan, you've experienced Morning Wick, Marinelli, William Clay Ford, Matt Millen, Martin Mayhew, Bob Quinn, Matt Patricia. You've experienced just about as bad as it can get. And usually every 15, 20 years, a franchise will deal with one instance of that you guys have dealt with it for 50 plus years god bless and um you know i i think a lot about how the league works you know how things are working around the league why they would work here uh, I, i'm gonna start with brad holmes actually yeah that's exactly what i'm gonna start with you go find me a two-year window with any GM in your franchise's history, go. Go look back. I'll save you the trouble. I did. <laughs> it doesn't exist. You go find a two-year window where you, able, you were able to relieve the cap, make the moves you made, uh, make the moves you made, excuse me, give non-committal contracts, draft <laughs> the way you did in the first and second round, Trade up in the first round for essentially nothing. It was a bunch of swap picks outside of pick number, what was it? The second round pick, I believe. Or it was a third, excuse me. So he basically traded up 20 spots for a third round pick. It doesn't happen. It's never happened, actually. Don't worry, I did all the research. <laughs> you don't have to waste your time this morning, good people. You won't ever see that window. And you know who has these type of windows or these performances as GMs? Well, the Ravens historically do. The Steelers historically do. The Rams more recently. The Falcons, uh, when they drafted Julio Jones, they went through a two, three-year window where they were just money in the offseason. That's a thing. That's a thing. And, you know, at the end of the day, Brad Holmes is going to be the, the first one that's going to give me the most confidence and then we'll move, of course, to, well, the ownership change, right? Now Sheila Hamp. She hasn't proven anything yet, right? Neither has Brad, neither has Dan Campbell. But you can't look me in the face this morning and tell me it's not different. And I don't mean it's different for the sake of you having hope, okay? I've done the show way too many times. We're not going to go down this path of hope. The NFL which is why it's one of the best sports, actually. Every year, you think it's your year. We're not going to do that on this show. <laughs> I'm not going to sell you hope. It's not my job. The job is to tell you what I think and tell you what it is. And what this team is right now is much more functional than it's ever been. And you could take it with a pinch of salt and say, well, Adam, it's never operated correctly. It's very true. It's very true. It really, truly hasn't. But it is now. I think you can tell with the culture change, right? The communication. You have a GM in place who, again, I, I just went through what he's accomplished so far in two years. That, that, that is how you become a, a quote, stable, functional franchise. They're on the right path. Do they have the quarterback? Do they have the head coach? I don't know. I, I like to think I know about the quarterback. Could be dead wrong. And then I look at the head coach and say, well, this guy truly cares about his players. And I don't want to hear the, they play hard. They're going to play hard for him. Eh, whatever. I don't care about that. It's your job to play hard. 
but he truly respects and cares for the players. And excuse me, last I checked, the guy he took over was the complete opposite of that, Matt Patricia. So when I watch episode two tonight, I'm going to have all that in the back of my head. And we'll see who they're going to make the who they're going to make the featured star of the show this time. The first episode, it was the coaches. It was Aiden Hutchinson, the former players, actually, I should say, who are now coaches. That's cool and all. But you have, you have something special now. You do. How special it is? Is it a division title? Is it multiple playoff wins? Is it an NFC title game? I'm not a fortune teller. <laughs> if I was, I'd be putting all my money in. <laughs> on the lines doing something. It's just not the case. But I think it's the best it's ever been. I really do. I'm sorry. I trashed your team last year. I didn't want to do it, but somebody had to. <laughs> it's just the reality. Sorry, I tell you what I see. And last year I saw a really bad football team and a really inexperienced, uh, inexperienced coach, a coach who at times really had no idea what the hell he was doing. But he learned and he progressed. Well, you know, it's funny. It's like you see a person for the first time and you carry that for the rest of your life. Well, that's not works in the NFL. That's just not. In the NFL, you can struggle early on and make up for it. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what our country is founded on anyways. Right? I'm not going to call it a second chance, but there is time for you to develop. And none of you can look me in the face, or at least with a straight face, I should say. And tell me Dan Campbell didn't win you over during the second stretch, or excuse me, down the second uh, stretch of the season. Especially, especially with his leadership decision with Anthony Lynn. Especially with the way the offense was night and day difference. Uh, and of course, look, again, people want to point to they played hard, they were in games, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can get away with that year one. You got to win games eventually. So that's Dan Campbell's next step. I think he's won the locker room. I think the players love him. The culture probably at Allen Park is the best it's been in a while. And you compound that with on-the-field success. Well, Detroit, you become a legit franchise. You become a franchise nobody, <laughs> nobody's going to make fun of. You can't make fun of stability. You can't make, you know, it's funny, actually. You look at the Ravens. The last time the Ravens won the Super Bowl, I want to say, was almost 10 years ago, maybe a little over 10 years ago. And they have been the model of consistency since. And if you're a Ravens fan, are you sitting there like, oh, can't believe I'm a Ravens fan. I got to wake up every Sunday and watch this team play. Yeah, you, John Harbaugh, uh, Ozzie Newsome. That's, it's nice. Must be nice. Where's that version for the Lions? Where have they ever had a Hall of Fame GM, a Hall of Fame head coach? It's never happened. And are these the two? I like Brad Holmes so far. I'd be willing to make a bet on Brad. But, Dan, I think it's way too early. And, again, if you want to coach in the NFL, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret, and it'll change your life forever. You ready for this? If you want to coach in the NFL, all you have to do is win. Not a hard concept. Not a hard concept at all. And I'm not talking 9 and 7, well, now 10 and 7, or 9 and 8, and then 7 and 10, and then 9 and 8 again. No, 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 no. Win. Division titles. Playoff games. Dare I say, get to an NFC championship game. That's when you become a respectable franchise. And... I've shared it with you. I think they're going to be a pain in the ass to play against. I think the offense is going to be one of the most efficient offenses in the NFL. I can't hide my optimism for this team this year. It's quite the opposite than what it was last year. And that's what I see. So if you think differently, I'm very curious to hear what you have to say, to, uh, say today. I am very curious. We'll have the phone lines open just after the break. We'll have them open all day. I am very curious what you think about your football team this year. Did I sum it up pretty well? I'd like to think so. <laughs> I like to think that's what the standard Lions fan is thinking going into the season. Man, it must be nice to have a nice GM. Knows what the hell he's doing. Fixed our salary cap. 
Got us some really nice picks. Oh, we also have future draft capital. That's a plus. We traded up 20 spots in the NFL draft for our third round pick. That must be nice. Oh, and then fast forward. We've been very fortunate for some reason under this GM. We've been very fortunate. Under Martin Mayhew, we were unfortunate, right? Under Martin Mayhew, you select Eric Ebron instead of an Aaron Donald, right? Under Brad Holmes, <laughs> three quarterbacks go in the first round. Or the first three picks, I should say. Then Kyle Pitts, generational type tight end, who could play wide receiver. Jamar Chase, generational. Miami needed a quarterback. They dra Or excuse me, they need to figure out if their quarterback is legit. In Tua, they drafted Jalen Waddell, who was a very good pick here, one for them. Penesul falls to you. He goes not top three any other draft. Fast forward to 2022. Trent Baalke sends you a gift. He says, Trayvon Walker, athleticism, build, speed. Oh, my goodness. I am in love with the prototypical edge player. Cool. Thank you, buddy. We took Aiden Hutchinson. Talk about, quote, meant to be. That's nice. That's fortunate. Team's a lot more fortunate right now. You create your own luck in life, right? I'm a big believer in that. I think that's exactly what Brad and the Lions are doing. So that's my optimism for the Lions this season. If you want to know why and where it stems from, that's why. That's where. And I don't want to hear, oh, well, they got to win games, Adam. They, they, now it's time. No, 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 no. You don't get to say that. <laughs> you actually don't. Whether Dan Campbell is your future head coach will be decided on the field. That's it. Whether Jared Goff is a bridge for the next two, three years or he's out of the league by the end of the year, up to his play on the field.